Come see me live on tour. I'm going to be in Oshawa, Ontario, December 7th, Toronto, Ontario, December 20th, Ottawa, Ontario, December or January, actually, 3rd and 4th. So we're going to be kicking off the year strong in the nation's capital. Okay, I'm going to get a haircut. I'm going to get everything fixed up. I look not great right now. I look like uh, uh, Zelensky. Um, you know, what do they call those in the movies when they like a stunt double stand in? I look like a Zelensky stand in right now. And um, that's OK. Or maybe I look like I'm doing a press conference for the IDF. I don't really care anymore. OK, um, everything that's been happening over the past month and a half or whatever it's been over almost two months of war in the Middle East. Well, I mean, it's been 3,500 years of war in the Middle East, but or more, but um, everybody's hating the Jews right now, even though they're the most fun to be around. I don't know if you've hung out with a Jew and then go hang out with a Palestinian and tell me which one you had more fun with, um, which one covered the bill. Actually, it might be a better question. So, uh, yes, our society is crumbling and it's being destroyed from the inside out. There are too many people in this country who don't like it here uh, for some reason, including not. And I'm not talking about just the uh, the Palestinian pro Palestinians, the Arabs, the Muslims. Um, for some reason, the Muslims hate it here when every other immigrant group group seems to kind of like it. I mean, the Indians, they they don't come here and they're they're just like I love they come to Canada and I want to have maybe can meet a white woman and I will be Canadian. You know, the Chinese people come here like I love Canada. I want to sing the national anthem. Let me sing a national anthem. I'm a proud Canadian. Uh, oh, Oh, homo native run. That's a not a native run. That's a my run. That's not your run. That's a my run. I, I, I bought my house. I didn't buy from a native person. I bought it from a white person. Maybe white people are the real native. Um, so, but it seems that the Muslims come and then they wear the hijab and they're at the protest and they're mad. And then if you make fun of them, then they send you death threats, which I've gotten a bunch of death threats and, you know, threats against my family. And the reason these people do that is because they have a temper and they're immature. Sorry, I'm not saying all Muslims have a temper and are immature, although if I was, it wouldn't be super incorrect. But just to maintain, uh, you know, just to stay within the hate speech laws here. Uh, yeah, not all Muslim people even agree with all this bullshit going on. Although, you know, if you if you're if you can get an Uber during a Palestine protest, the Muslim guy that picks you up in that Uber is I mean, but the fact that he's not at the pro he's pro Israel is what I'm saying. There are there are pro Israel Muslims. They just don't talk about it. Right. They don't talk about it because it's kind of like being a pro, uh, you know, it's kind of like being anti LGBTQ plus ideology while being gay. And those people don't want to speak out because then the whole gay community comes after them. It's like that, except if you're Arab and you're like, I like Israel, then, you know, something real bad happens. And it, it sounds like this. Three, two, one. Um, so people are a little afraid. People are a little afraid. And, you know, something that bothers me is just some of the hypocrisy out there. I know there's some of my Muslim Canadian brothers and sisters running around saying things like, well, why don't I have the freedom of speech to suggest that Israel should not exist as a country? And um, that's that's rich. It's rich when Muslims are trying to tell you that that they want their freedom of speech. Meanwhile, do we remember what happens when we talk shit about Muslims? Okay, do we remember Charlie Hebdo? Now, that's my main goal here is to not get Charlie Hebdo. So I hope my Muslim brothers and sisters, the haters, the lovers, whoever is listening, can really kind of take a step back here and go, what, what the fuck are we trying to do? 
Are you trying to make everybody hate you? Are you trying to make everybody afraid of you? Um, because that's kind of what's happening. And I do understand the Muzis, the Muslims. Um, they're afraid, too. They're afraid of, not really afraid of Jews. They're afraid of psychotic whites like the guy in Vermont that, um, you know, tragically shot those three Palestinians. I believe they're all alive, though. So still safer to be Palestinian in America, I guess, than in Gaza. But yeah, that's not good. You can't go around shooting people and it just makes the whole situation worse. But I have to say that a lot of the anti-Muslim violence or whatever, it comes from dumb, small town, kind of, you know, hillbilly whites. It, you know, it comes from white people that probably also hate Jews. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, but they, you know, everybody's brainwashed now one way or another. I'm fucking, you know, I try not to be brainwashed pretty hard not to be at this point. But it's mostly whites shooting Muslims. There's not a lot of Jews out there doing the old terror attacks. Now, with that being said, I know like the, 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 I got in an argument with one guy early on when this happened, and he was he was like, "Habibi, Habibi, my mosque in Toronto, there was Jews coming and threatened, and the police, no, they, no, they, no, no, maybe a Jew drove by and was like, fuck you.' I get it. That's not good, right? Like we don't want people doing that. But what the fuck do you expect, bro? You know, like, and I and I get it with the Jews too, but it's like. Well, what about, you know, people are pissed off because they saw videos of women being murdered at point blank range by AK-47s being held by Hamas guys. And, you know, the kids being kidnapped, all that shit happened. And then now it's like, oh, that doesn't, you know, let's just gloss over that. Let's just pay attention to the retaliation for that crime. And let's just paint this as that's the real crime. And then there's this whole thing of like, well, no, bro, it's because like fucking the Jews have been doing this for like 75 years. So 75 years ago, the Jews went through the Holocaust and now they have a successful country. And people who live in countries like Canada and the U.S., which are settler colonial nations, that's how they started. People who live in settler colonial nations, including Canada, Australia, U.S., whatever. European countries that had colonies abroad. The people and these are the people who are mad at Israel, the most mad, uh, you know, in terms of being on Twitter and saying that they shouldn't exist. Most of the people saying that actually live in Western society. And the reason is. Because all of the people that hate Israel who live in the Islamic world are more preoccupied with making ends meet and being able to survive than should Israel exist, should Israel not exist. They're more preoccupied with what's going on in their own countries um, to a certain extent. I know there have been a lot of those big Arab, you know, you know, protests, pro protests where they, you know, peaceful protests in those Arab countries where they're running around mad at Israel. But my, but they're not, they're not tweeting in English. Okay. These are not the tweets that we are seeing. We are seeing the majority of people who want Israel to not exist, or they want them to give all the land back to the Palestinians. Yeah. Let's just move out of Tel Aviv, all these office towers that we built in downtown Tel Aviv and give it to, you know, Hamas. I mean, it's just this lack of, any brain function going on that's that's been driving me fucking it's been driving me a little bit nuts as you can tell maybe this podcast wasn't what you wanted today maybe you just wanted me to go like this but this is what's happening i'm a comedian i use my voice i want to talk about it and how it's affecting everybody now i'm starting to actually get a lot of jewish fans which is really nice um, so only about 15,000 Palestinian civilians had to die for me to gain some notoriety in the Jewish community. So thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> but 
you know, there was a firebomb at a uh, Jewish community center in Montreal. They shot the people shot guns into a um a Jewish school in Montreal. Now, that's pretty bad, right? And like I think, you know, people want to say to me, "Oh, Ben's, you know, now I'm, you know, like I ha I had some woman mess, you know, comment on one of my videos on Facebook actually. You can go see it. I chirped her back. Um, but she was like, I can't believe I ever found you funny. You really are a racist, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you really are a racist. A year and a half of me going like this. And and that was fine. But then I'm like, you know, I think these uh, Palestinians are going a little far. That's somehow racist. No, you're an idiot. OK, there's a lot of fucking idiots out there right now. More dumb people on their phones, tweeting their opinions, trying to be involved in poli political shit. There's more of these idiots than ever before on the internet. Like right now, if you just go and tweet free Palestine, I'm pretty sure they just give you 15,000 followers because every idiot tweeting like free Palestine, Jews are evil, has like 20,000 followers now because guess what? How many Muslims are there in the world? Oh, wait, I'll, this is like a Miss Rachel. If you have kids, you know, Miss Rachel or Blippi. How many Muslims are there in the world? Let me see. Um, how many Muslims are there? 1.8 billion. That is why it is so popular to just side with the Palestinian plight and just go, you know, fuck Israel. Israel's a fucking apartheid state, bro. It's a fucking, it, you know, it, all that shit is easy to do because there's 1.8 billion people that essentially agree. Okay, there's some Muslims out of that 1.8 billion, like I said earlier, who think Israel should exist. We're talking couple mil at most, maybe 5 million if you want <laughs> out of the 1.8 billion. Seriously, how many do you... Tell me in the comments how many Muslims out of the 1.8 billion you think. Um, but this is the thing. What I'm talking about right now is edgy because talking shit about Islam is now like this. The, that is the scariest thing you can touch on. Even though we have freedom of speech, you have Justin Trudeau going in front of the media and saying, that he stands for freedom of speech in this country. And that's why the Palestinians should be allowed to hold Taliban flags and Hamas flags and call for the end of Israel's existence because we have freedom of speech. Okay. Well, what happens when you use freedom of speech to criticize Islam? What happens when you use freedom of speech to talk about all the negative aspects of Islam? Of course there's backlash and yeah, maybe you're not going to get fired from your job for doing it. Although it's very possible you might, um, for either talking shit about Israel or Palestine at this point, and which is very fucked up. But, um, you know, you, you're at risk of being murdered for talking about Islam by people who will threaten you on the internet, um, seemingly don't care about the laws of this country. They don't care about the culture of this country, which some people go, you know, some Muslims go, there is no culture, so that's why Islam is better. And uh, there is no culture. There's no culture in Canada. How about this? Close your eyes for a second and tell me if you recognize this song. Ba 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 Stomp and Tom Connors. The good old hockey game is the best game you can name. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. That wasn't about Sharia law. I'm just saying. There was some culture there. The native stuff, sure. Love it. I love the... I like that more than the Islamic call to prayer, which they're very similar. You know, this is the native, and then this is the Islamic call to prayer. I mean, they're very similar. So maybe, maybe the Muslims are right. Maybe they actually, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but 
it's interesting. It's interesting that people whose culture is from the Middle East um, come to Canada and then they're mad that we don't care about like and, and you could argue that you could say, oh, well, what about the Jews? Are they from the Middle East? Yeah, but they've been around. Let's just say that they've been around for a while. OK, the Arabs weren't really getting displaced right before Jesus <laughs> like the, the the Jews were displaced before Jesus. The Arabs mostly they're called Arabs because they live in Arabia, Arabian Peninsula. The Jews were from Judea. Why are there white Jews and why are there Muslim Jews? Because they fucking went in different directions from Judea. One of them went south and to the Arabian countries. And then the other guys went to the Ashkenazis, went uh, north. Because they kept getting fucking murdered by everybody. The Romans, the fucking, uh, you know, uh, what, what was it? Sissanids? Sis. Sissanid Empire and Jews. Let's see, Sissanid. In several cases, Jews tried to help support the Sasanian advance. A pogrom in Antioch in 608 would lead to a Jewish revolt in 610, which was crushed. So even in 608, which is like at the beginning of Islam, there was a pogrom, which is one, you know, which is essentially what Hamas did on the 7th, which is why the response was so intense because they came in with guns to try and kill random fucking people. And then you have half the world going, that's okay because those people are, you have, there's mandatory military service in Israel. So that's why you're kidnapping babies and, and people who are 90 years old because, and they're, and they're in the military. Like, no, I'm done with the fucking idiotic bullshit. The other bullshit, Jews run the world, Jews, even if Jews run the world, what is, are they running the world and bringing all the, and then they, oh, they're the ones making all the Muslims come here. The reason that there are Jews in these groups who bring in migrants or, or, or whatever this is, this whole thing is that, you know, there's Jews part of these companies, these NGOs, and they're bringing, yeah, because Jews are, they're, they're diverse. Jews have a diversity of thought. Not all Jews, as you see, are pro-Israel or pro this or pro that or anti-immigration or anti-vaccine or anti. There's, there's a differing of opinion. I'm sorry to say, but the Arabs, there's not that much differing of opinion, especially when it comes to fucking Israel, bro. So look, majority of Jews obviously on board with Israel, but then you have the Jews who are, you know, they go, oh, there's Jews trying to bring migrants here. And there's also Jews who are anti-Israel. So that means that you are, you know, unless you're on board with the anti-Israel Jews, then you're like evil because you want, it's just idiotic. Yeah, there are Jews on NGOs trying to help people because Jews are fucking nerds and they want to help and they want to do good things. And some of them try to do good things and then they fuck up and they make everything worse for the rest of the Jews. Like wh whoever the Jews are that are pushing for the LGBTQ plus community bullshit. Part of the reason that there's so much fucking anti-Semitism right now is because of that. And it's because of the couple, you know, how many Jews do you think are responsible, you know, on these NGOs who are bringing immigrants here? That So you're telling me that Jews who are good people trying to help. Maybe they're not helping, but they're trying to help. That means that I should be against Israel because it's a plot to bring down the West. Why would fucking Israel want to destroy all of its allies? It's it's it doesn't like it's stupid. OK, if you think that you're dumb. Right. And then there's the other the far right people who, you know, they're on the Jews brought the, the Israel brought the immigrants. But then there's the um, uh, the far right people who are like, oh, Jews did the vaccine. So that's why they're evil. The world needed a vaccine. 
Jews have the research and develop biggest or, or you know, all the big bio technical companies, all the big pharmaceutical companies, they have research and development in Israel because there's a lot of fucking smart people who are really highly educated there. That's, I mean, that's not a fucking, consp you know, the, the, oh, why are there so many Jews on the head of this company and the head of that company? Because they're fucking smart. Why are you some idiot on Twitter questioning why there's CEOs of Jewish race or this, that? Why aren't you a CEO? Why, why, why aren't you a CEO? You're nobody. Okay. There's just too many nobodies who think they're somebodies. And, you know, maybe some people will say that about me. Oh, boy, oh, this guy. Thinks he's yeah. Well, I'm kind of doing decent. Okay. We just did a huge tour all month of November. Went to almost every single Canadian city in the last two months. In the last, from, from October to now, I've been Halifax, Nova Scotia, St. John's, Newfoundland. I've been to Ottawa. I've been, you know, I've been everywhere. I just, this tour that I just went on, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, okay, Victoria, BC, Vancouver, Surrey, Edmonton, Calgary, hey, hey, hey. You know, I took my kid to a Raptors game. I was proud of it. I actually got a one death threat from that, from posting my kid on, uh, at the Raptors game. Some Muslim told me that they would burn my kid. And that's and then I'm supposed to be like, no, oh, they're not all bad. I'm just saying there's not most Jews, I, I think, that are mad online. You know, they're they, they're commenting. I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe Tell me if I'm wrong, uh, my Muslim friends. Are there Jews sending you harassment and death threats i'd like to know send it to uh to my email but i'm just you know look i don't want to spend too much time on this but it is the biggest news right now is all about israel palestine israel palestine israel palestine and then there's people saying it's a distraction yeah it's a distraction because the bigger story is not you know the israel palestine thing the bigger story is what it is doing to people's brains it is melting people's brains. It is disintegrating society into a place where there is no truth anymore in a way, kind of like COVID, but COVID was the first real uh, instance of this where we had to sit at home and, and just kind of go, that's, that's what's happening. Right. But this is different because now then there was, you know, it's fake it's this now it's like there's there you know anything that happens is questioned as even being true and i get why like i'm not an idiot like i know but you know this is the government's fault right this is the government's fault for you know making people psychotic making people stupid taking away good education taking away all these things and replacing it with, you know, transgender ideologies and, you know, forced vaccines and all this stuff. Of course, people are going to go fucking nuts. I'm going nuts. Everybody's going nuts. It's November. This is like people want to hibernate. People want to go to sleep. When I used to do commercial real estate, that's right. I used to do commercial real estate office leasing. And when I did that in November, December, there was no deals getting done. OK, every all the all the real estate brokers did in November and December was maybe come to work for a couple hours, do send a couple emails and then go for drinks. And, and there'd be, you know, a couple parties, uh, Oxford Cup, different landlords that own buildings. There was in Toronto's Oxford, Orlando, Brookfield. They would have these big holiday parties and all the brokers would go and get hammered. Nobody did work. Nobody did real work. I don't want to do work right now. I don't want to even do this podcast right now, but I'm doing it because I fucking love you. And I want you to hear my voice and I want you to hear what I think. And I want to be coherent and I want to be a voice because this is a fucking void right now. We are in a void of logic and, and reasoning right now. We are like Western civilization is being attacked by people who live here. There are people who live here who all they want to do is convince you that 
you know, uh, settler colonialism is bad. And any settler colonial, like, what even is settler colonialism? Settler colonialism is an ongoing system of power that perpetuates the genocide and repression of indigenous peoples and cultures. Essentially, hegemonic in scope, settler colonialism normalizes the continuous settler occupation, occupation, exploiting lands and resources to which indigenous peoples have genealog genealogically, genealogical. That's, I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. This is, this is the Oxford Dictionary. Fuck the Oxford Dictionary, okay? People came here searching for new land. They found it. A lot of fucking shit went down. But that does not mean that we can't love our country, love our kids, and raise them in the country and want it to be safe. You're not allowed to want your country to be safe anymore because we colonized it 500 years ago. That's idiotic. You want the country to be good. You want the people to be happy. You want uh, your neighbors to smile. You want to, you know, I want to go to a Leaf game. I want to go to a Raptors game. I want to go to, a, you know, a baseball game. I don't give a shit what happened 500 years ago. And oh, well, what about the natives? What about the natives? There, are they still, they're still here. I mean, the ones that didn't die from the blankets or whatever that we gave them. But can they not go and get jobs? Can they not go to, they, they have free education, but they don't want it. Oh, that's white man education, right? This episode is brought to you by Patreon. Please support me on Patreon, guys. Patreon.com slash Ben Bankus, B-E-N-B-A-N-K-A-S. December 1st, I'm going to be putting a second comedy special, the second comedy special that I made this year, live in Edmonton on my Patreon exclusively. $6 a month to support me. It goes a long way. Think about it. If 100 people sign up times five, that's a lot of, how much is that? What's 100 times five? 500? 100 times... Five, 500, that would be $500 a month. We're a little over that. My goal for the year is 2000 times six. That's about 12 grand a month. That's where we should be at. That will allow me to have a studio, not in my small apartment with my kid who needs to sleep. Another reason that we don't get enough episodes out uh, and certain things. So Please support the show, support me so I can keep speaking my mind, saying what the fuck I want and being funny. Thank you. There's too much idiotic bullshit going on. This idea that we should all like feel bad every day about the fact that we have a society here. But that's what's weird about it too is it's, there's nowhere to go if you're not indigenous or person of color or you know gay or trans or if you're just a straight white guy there is no country on earth that you are genuinely accepted except for countries where there's no white people like well or less thailand i feel like you'd be probably treated better as a white man in thailand than you know, Going to Europe right now, you know, go walk around France while they're doing a Palestine protest. I mean, you're, you're, you're better off to go to these countries. And a lot of white people are South America. They're white. Argentina. They're pretty white. Not a lot of Muslims moving there. Why is that? Why don't Muslims want to go to Argentina? Why don't they want to go to Colombia? Why don't they want to go to South America? Why don't they want to go to? They only want to come to the West. They only want to go to Europe. They only want to go to North America. Why? And then they get here and then they're mad at everybody. And they're mad at me. And I'm a colonialist. I'm a colonialist. I was born here. You came here and now you hate it. And you're telling me I'm a colonialist. No. You know what you are? You're a fucking idiot. Okay? You're a small-brained, dumb person that does not understand that the world doesn't fucking revolve around you and you're fucking... Muslim religion and, and, you know, Islam and brother, you have to, the Habibi, Allah will know. I don't give a fuck. And I'm allowed to say that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you, you know, you can go do whatever you want. There's mosques, there's this, there's marches. You can go out fucking every day and stand in front of the Israeli embassy and, and scream and yell free Palestine, all that shit you're allowed to do. But I'm also allowed to say it's dumb. That's the trade-off that you get. Okay. 
Because you don't have that freedom of speech in your country, wherever the fuck you're from. You're from, what, name it. What, what, what Muslim country are you from where you have the freedom to say, I love Israel? None. What Muslim country do you have the freedom to, to openly criticize the government or the king or or the fucking, you know, in Syria? Are you uh, can you openly accuse Bashar al-Assad, who, by the way, killed how many people did he kill? How many people did Bashar al-Assad kill? Civil war in Syria has killed around 580,000 people, of which a minimum of 306 deaths are non-combatant. So 306,000 civilians, more than 90% civilian deaths. Um, the war has also forcibly displaced 14 million Syrians with over 7 million refugees, causing the largest refugee crisis in the world. So that's Bashar al-Assad. That is the leader of a Muslim country, Syria, okay? Killing not people from another country. He's not going into Lebanon. He didn't go into Israel and blow the shit out of them and make them all displaced. I know a lot of you'd want that. He didn't go into Turkey. He didn't go into Iraq. He killed his own people. He displaced them. And there were no protests for that. There were no Muslims on Twitter going nuts. There was no... Uh, you know, Piers Morgan, you know, con confused about what to fucking say or do. There was none of that. It was just, oh, Syria's gone. That was a country. What were they again? Muslim? Ah, yeah. Well, now they're half run by ISIS, half run by Bashar al-Assad. They're both fighting each other in the same country and blowing the shit out of each other. But that's fine. That's all fine. As long as it's not Jews doing it. So that's my point. And that is the logical point. And, um... Syria, by the way, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, all these countries are technically like colonial because they were kind of started by European nations. Syria, is Syria a colonial state? Let's see. Syria is considered to have emerged as an independent country for the first time on 24 October, 1945. So before 1945, what the fuck were they? Did Syria get colonized? There are a lot of countries whose borders were imposed by Europe European imperialists that managed to do fine. But the point is that French colonialism set up modern day Syria in a way that contributed to tensions between ethnic and religious groups, which eventually became important for today's war. So Syria was a colonial society. Hello? Is anybody there? Uh, let's see. What is What countries have never been colonized? <coughs> Ethiopia has never been colonized. Bhutan has never been colonized. Saudi Arabia, apparently. Uh, Thailand, Iran, Nepal, countries never colonized. Okay. Oh, ne never colonized, but occupied. You know, this is just like, and, and are these countries doing well after the, uh, oh, well, that's because the countries don't do well, bro, because like America, like, no, it's because the people who run the fucking countries are corrupt and they don't give a shit about their citizens. They don't give a shit about their citizens being successful on the world stage. They don't give a shit about education, global standards of education. All they give a fuck about is controlling their population and brainwashing the fuck out of them. And as you can see, it worked pretty good because even after they leave these countries where they've been brainwashed, they come to another country and they're still fucking brainwashed even though they have everything you fucking want. What do you have in Canada you know, what is there in Canada? The, the, what is being left to be desired as somebody who comes from another country that you you hate it so much here? If you're Muslim, we have mosques. We have huge Muslim population. If you're fucking African, we have African people. We have African shit. And if you don't like it, nobody's forcing you to be here. It's a free country. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Yes, I understand it's expensive to live here. But that's kind of the point. 
That's why Leaf games are expensive. It's to keep out the fucking losers. I'm sorry. But if you come here and you're like, why is it so expensive? I cannot afford. Because you're not meant to be here. Go to fucking Argentina. It's cheap. Colonization occurs when one country takes over the lands and people of another country or territory and subjects them to rule by its government instead of their own. For example, the American colonies before the Revolutionary War were land holdings of the British government ruled by um, the British king, despite the fact that the Native Americans lived in North America for thousands of years. Yeah, they lived in North America for thousands of years and never had fucking roads, motherfucker. Okay, they didn't have paved roads. They didn't have fucking trains. They didn't develop the land. And if you want to live in a world where, well, that's what settler colonialism is, is developing land and the land should have been left to, you know, the fucking wolves and the bears and the deer. And you're an idiot. Once again, you're an idiot. Why is China developing their land? Then? Are they colonizing themselves or are they just trying to modernize their fucking country? It's called modernization. Why are the best Muslim countries what are the best Muslim countries? The most modern ones. The ones with the most... What are the most successful Arab states? Rank. Which is the richest Arab state? Qatar. Which, by the way, is where all of the uh, fuckers from uh, Hamas live. What are the most successful Arab countries? Um... Why is this so hard to find? Okay, we have 10 richest. Let's look at richest. They really don't want to. They call it richest. They don't want to. This is Yahoo Finance, Arab World, GDP. It, it, like this is like, why is this so hard to understand? Saudi Arabia is number one. Then UAE. Then Egypt. Then Iraq. So basically from... Like, it's Saudi Arabia and UAE, and then everything's just, after that is, <gasps> their GDP just falls by a lot, um, by hundreds of millions, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars a year, their GDP falls off. And are we going to say that, oh, Palestine's on the list. Palestine, 18th, Palestine's 18th richest Arab, Arab League country, apparently. Apparently, they're in the Arab League, though the Arab don't seem to want to help. And, and a lot of, you know, the Arabs never talk about that. What, when you go up to the pro-Palestinians, you go, why don't any of the Arab countries take the Palestinian refugees? Why should they have to? The, that's their land. They sh No, but that's not the argument. That's not the conversation that we're having. This is like when politicians just try to, you know, you know fuck their way out of uh, answering the question. Why don't Arab countries take... Palestinian refugees. Do you know why? I, I I know why I think they don't. Why? Let's see what Google says. Why don't Arab countries take Palestinian refugees? Uh, this is from a couple last week. Jordan's King Abdullah II gave a similar message a day earlier saying no refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. Why? There's no answer of why. Why Egypt and other Arab countries are unwilling to take in refugees. This is from October 18th on City News. It's a Canadian outlet. Palestinians wait to blah, blah, blah. Um, the two countries which flank Israel on opposite sides share borders with Gaza and the occupied West Bank, blah, 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 Egyptian. Their refusal is rooted in fear that Israel wants to force a permanent expulsion of Palestinians into their countries and nullify Palestinian demands for statehood. So it's exactly what I just said. That is the argument. We're not taking them because that's not the Jews' land. So there's no humanitarianism going on with Jordan or with Egypt or with Syria, where they're saying, let's take these people in and, and make them feel safe here. Although Jordan apparently is that is is 90% Palestinian. Jordan is Jordan 90% Palestinian. 
Jordan is 70% Palestinian by uh, ethnicity. It occupies 75% of the original British mandate of Palestine. 75%, guys. There it is. Read them and weep. Um, it's wild, isn't it? So now, they're, even though they're 75% Palestinian ethnically, they still won't take the Palestinians who are under the Jewish rule as kind of, you know, the martyr thing. It's about the martyr. The, the, the other richer Arab countries want to use the Palestinians as martyrs to try and get that land back, to try and push the Jews out, to try and make their life harder. They don't want to just make the Palestinians' lives easier and say, you know what, come here, we'll make give you a good life. We'll, you know, How much money does the Egyptian government give to refugees like Canada does when we're putting up refugees in uh, hotels and putting them up in you know, paying for all their meals and for their uh, educate, you know, assimilation, educate, all this stuff. Is Egypt paying for any of this stuff? Okay. And by the way, Egypt, perfect example. Egyptians, like Egyptian is a race. Egyptian versus Arabic. So... Languages of Egypt. The official language of Egypt is Arabic, and most Egyptians speak one of several vernacular dialects of the language, as the case in other Arab countries. When did Egypt become Arab? 641. 641 after Jesus, 641 years after Jesus. After the fall of Rome... Egypt became part of the Byzantine Empire, which was the eastern part of Rome, which because Rome broke off into two, the east and the west. And then the west was like, fuck you guys. And the east was like, yo, let's just fucking do this. And then Justinian made the country good again and invaded a whole bunch of places and kind of kept the, uh, you know, the Roman traditions alive. Otherwise, they would have just died off. And then eventually the Ottoman Arabs came in and, and took all that shit over. But this is my point. That My point is that is Egypt a settler colonial country because the Romans went there and colonized it in, you know, 2000 BC? Does that mean that Egypt is a settler colonial? Are, are we doing ancestry.ca's on every Egyptian to make sure there's no Roman lineage? Like, you can't just, oh, settler colonial. Everything's fucking settler colonialism. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, but that's a good question. When did Rome colonize Egypt? 30 BC. Rome's rule over Egypt officially began with the arrival of Octavian, later called Augustus, in 30 BC following his defeat of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. People have been fighting over land in these areas for thousands of years okay the natives who were here before in canada and, and with this whole settler colonial thing which i think that settler colonialism and this whole woke ideology is actually kind of racist to natives because it's basically saying that all natives are just natives you're indigenous to the land they're all indigenous to the land that's not true some were indigenous to upper canada some were indigenous to lower canada some were indigenous to you know, the the hills of Montana. They didn't also go to fucking New York, okay? They had their own empires and, and little, you know, I love that. that's me being a settler colonialist. The natives had their little, they had their little, you know, little societies. But they did. They had their fucking different religions and different teepees. And they fucking fought each other. And we don't even know how much they fucking fought each other for how many thousands of years. Because a lot of that shit is not even recorded history because they didn't really have that. They didn't. The, the, the aboriginals, some of them in uh, South America, they, they didn't have writing, some of them. They used like, they used string to tell stories that that was their language to like a little string with the and that and I'm supposed to feel bad about that you oh we took their land they were made you know they wrote their history on a piece of fucking string I'm just saying here I'm po I'm posing I'm fighting for 
the our right to exist. It's everybody's right to exist now. It's not just Israel. It's Canada's right to exist as Canada, called Canada. Should we change the name because of fucking natives? It's idiotic. What? Here, let's let's ask this question. What indigi? Um, what indigenous people were at war with each other? In the 18th century, now this is already, we've already been here, but um, Iroquois, Iroquois living in the St. Lawrence Valley would travel as far as Carolina to wage war against the nations they called the Flatheads, a generic term that had included the Chickasaw, Choctaw, and Cherokee. Okay, so I was wrong. They did fucking travel to fight and murder and kill and take land. That's what they did. That's what humans do. We all do it. Okay? That's why you buy a fucking house. Because you want land. That's why we have a housing crisis in Canada. Even though this is the biggest goddamn country. Uh, geographically, I believe, in the world. Second only to Russia. But we have a housing crisis. I, I, like... What wars did indigenous people, oh, that, but they only want to talk about, they don't, they're very, oh, in 1812, they did, oh, the, let's, before European settlers arrived, what were natives doing? Before the arrival of European explorers and traders, indigenous people were organized into complex self-governing nations Throughout what is now called North America, in its early days, the relationship between European... Okay. Self-governing nations that were at war with each other for land. And then they would win and kill and rape the other native people. And then what would they make them do? They'd make them live in their land now. That is my native land. I know it was your native land. Now it's mine. The idea that people should not celebrate where they live because the history of their countries involved violent takeovers and wars and shit is low IQ retard shit. Okay. And it's university's fault because they stopped teaching. Just this is what happened. Now it's, this is what happened. How do we contextualize this? How do we contextualize well, you know, how bad it is for trans people in 1400s native. Shut the fuck up. Sincerely. I want to know the list of native wars. Warfare in pre-Columbian North America. Here, this is from the Government of Canada website, by the way. The European explorers who discovered the Americas in the 15th century came to a land already inhabited by a diverse and substantial indigenous population. Diverse. They were diverse. The natives were diverse because they were all fucking different and they all hated each other. According to the Aboriginal creation stories, their ancestors had lived here forever. Of course, that's what, that's what woke culture does. We always believe, let's believe the ancestral stories of the natives. Let's believe Hamas. Let's believe like you know, Syrian girl on Twitter or who's that Danish doctor on Twitter, by the way, that absolute cunt. I don't know who she is, but she loves Arab cock. I'm sure of it. The only reason she's doing this is because she fucks an Arab. I'm guaranteeing you this. And she, you know, she she's the type of uh, white that uh, from Europe that she like wants to wear a hijab in some fucked up kind of, you know, anti-establishment statement. And I get that. I get that, you know, in the 90s, it was, you know, heavy metal and and punk bands. And now it's wearing a hijab. But she she's annoying. She's dumb. She spreads false information. Like there was a, a, a little tweet about, oh, Gal Gadot, who's the, you know, Israeli actress who plays Superwoman, she had some uh, screening in L.A. of um, whatever was going on with Hamas and shit. And in that screening, uh, there was fights outside. There was fights breaking out outside. 
And then this Muslim tweet that went around and it literally on the side of it says like Islamic news dot IR or some fucking foreign bullshit. And it's like Gal Gadot's, you know, uh, screening, empty seats, no celebrity. And then they all share it. And it's like, this is just fake. I saw the same bitch sharing. Here's a letter written by an Israeli woman about how thankful she was about how her daughter was treated as while she was a hostage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a Jew writing a letter thanking Hamas. Shut the fuck up. Okay. It's all propaganda. It's all fake. And all those people are are, are sharing this shit and, and acting like they're high and mighty and that they're better than everybody else. They're not. You live in a fucking everybody's settler colonial. You, you know, oh, sh that woman lives in Denmark. Well, who? let's go look at the history. History of Denmark. Was it always Denmark? Denmark wasn't always as small as it is today. Southern Sweden belonged to Denmark. Oh, so Denmark actually was the colonialist. That's why the Muslim, she loves Muslim uh, colonialism. She likes Muslim colonialism specifically, which is when they just come here and peacefully until Israel goes to war and then they get angry. Um, Southern Sweden belonged to Denmark and Norway being in a union with Denmark for 400 years also made it a combined significant larger territory. The first recorded use of the word Denmark within Denmark itself is found on the two gelling stones, which are rune stones believed to be erected by Gorm of the Old and Harald Bluetooth 965 after, uh, you know, AD. Um, the Vikings originated from the area that became modern day Denmark. So the Vikings, so she's a Viking. Her, you know, that that doctor woman on, on, on Twitter who, who fuck knows her name. Of course, she, 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 she loves raping and pillaging. That's, this is like in her blood. Um, so the, again, we're going to get out of here in a moment, but uh, I want to read you this from the Canadian Canada.ca warfare in pre-Columbia North America. Uh, the indigenous peoples in this land were divided into a number of nations, which ethnologists racist classify on the basis of cultural and linguistic characteristics in the East from the Atlantic coast to the great lakes area, Algonquin, and Iroquoian people mingled and divided the available resources in the subarctic boreal forest and northeastern deciduous woodland. They div okay, so you're telling me they didn't. And they have a picture of a Mohawk warrior from Tayen Dinaga, eighteen thirteen. I'm talking about like in 500 BC. You're telling me they weren't fighting? Northern Plains, the Assiniboine and the Blackfoot lived in a nomadic pedestrian existence. They survived mainly by hunting by, I mean, okay, they hunted bison and then we came here and we made roads. I'm not going to feel bad about that shit. I'm sorry. It, it's history. It's what happened. And I'm sick of contextualizing it in the context of the diaspora, of the marginalization of go fuck yourself. Okay. Go to a Starbucks and order a fucking caramel macchiato and shut the fuck up. Remember that saying, have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. And that should be Western society's new catchphrase. We need to bring it back. You're mad about Israel. You're mad about Palestine. You don't want to support Coca-Cola. You don't want to support McDonald's. You don't want to support Starbucks because you think that all those companies are evil and support Israel. So what's, what's your, what's your store here? Let's find what are, what, Coffee doesn't support Israel. Uh, is Starbucks support Israel? Starbucks. Oh, here we go. This is from Starbucks.com, by the way. Does support uh, rumors that Starbucks or Howard provides, which I guess is the bigger company. Financial support to the Israeli government and or the Israeli army army are unequivocally false. Starbucks is a publicly held company and as such is required to disclose any corporate giving. So that was fake. 
Uh, does Tim Hortons support Israel? Tim Hortons, a globally recognized coffee and donut chain, has found itself emboldened in a controversy due to his support for the IDF. Oh, so can't go to can't go to Timmy's if you're Muslim now. Can't go to Timmy. I mean, you work there because most of them are Muslim, but uh, or Indian. Um, what drink can I have that doesn't support Israel? It's on TikTok. What all the fizzy drinks that don't look at all these fucking boycott. All, it, by the way, TikTok is the most like anti-Israel, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, Starbucks pro Palestinians yelling at Starbucks employees. Imagine yelling at a Starbucks employee who's a minimum wage worker about a global military conflict and then feeling like you're doing something right. You're an idiot. Um, so I guess this is, you can't have a Coca-Cola and a smile and shut the fuck up. You can't have a Starbucks and a macchiato and shut the fuck up. I don't know what you can have. Go have a fucking baklava from a goddamn shawarma place in Canada or the U S or in Europe or whatever country that you live in. God bless you. Australia, go eat something in peace. Sit on your balcony, sit on your thing. Look out the window. These countries are peaceful for the most part. The West, we did a lot. We, we you know, thank the whites for doing the majority of the rape and murders way back then so that you could come here and go to a fucking Raptors game, okay? I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me completely go off and just rant, and it felt really good to just kind of rant and and give my opinion, and I'm sure some people, a lot of people disagree with me and different for different reasons, and, you know, maybe they don't, you know, I had a woman, oh, you're not funny anymore because you... Well, I said the same shit about COVID. Like I said the same shit about um, pretty much every issue that's happened over the last three years. And I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to do what I know best, which is talking shit and pissing people off, making people laugh and giving people a bit of it, it's cathartic. I hope you listened to this podcast and went, that was cathartic. Thank you for listening to the Banker show. And we will be back next week.